Welcome everybody to our end of year Vintage Books Live celebration. I wanted to just get everybody together in this almost longest night of the year, just to talk a little bit about light and what it means to us. So the first thing I was thinking of is what do you think of when you hear the word light? A blazing sunrise, a flashlight beam, stars twinkling, a campfire, or maybe that really annoying light on your computer that seems innocuous during the day and then you go to bed and it's in your face all night. <laughs> but it definitely in the Northern Hemisphere, at least this time of year, is something that is something that we notice, that we're aware of, you know, whether it's just complaining because it's dark at 430 or you know, maybe the neighbors have a particularly obnoxious holiday lighting, like shining in your house, or, you know, maybe we're the ones decorating with all the lights. And so as way of celebration, I just wanted to invite a couple of friends that we've talked to um, earlier in the year to just kind of chat about that. Um, unfortunately, Armin uh, Tolentino was going to be with us tonight, too, but he um, wasn't able to make it. So we've got William Erickson and Gwendolyn Morgan, both of whom are poets and both of whom have hung out with us before earlier in the year on Vintage Books Live. Um, Gwendolyn's uh, most recent uh, book of poetry is Flight Feathers, and William's most recent book of poetry is Monotonies of the Wildlife. I think that you probably both have had other stuff published like in magazines and, and journals and such um, around those, you know, since then or around that time, but those are the most recent books that we, but we have in the, uh, in the bookstore. So I'm just going to open it up for both you and both William and Gwendolyn to start us off that, what do you think of when you think of the word light or the concept of light? Um, I'll just jump in because it's interesting. I was, I had this idea for a poem kind of circulating in my head a couple of weeks ago. And it was one of those ideas that like, I tried it and it failed and I tried it and it failed and I tried it and it failed. But it's like, you know, I, I think of light as being sort of a particular thing that we need exactly when we don't have it and exactly when we have it, we don't need it anymore. Um, and that was always just an interesting thought to me. And, you know, maybe I'll return to it again later. Um, but it's like so befuddling to me that I just can't even wrap my head around how to write about it. Um, I also just instinctually think about weight um, and the ability to create something sparse and light that is sort of unusually heavy or 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 contradictorily heavy. Um, that's a huge deviation from the topic of your actual question, but just sort of you know came into my mind as you were asking. Actually, it isn't a deviation because I think that light is a word that means different things in different contexts. So that's actually part of what I wanted to think about is what we think about, and it's not just the quality of light and dark; it's other things too. So Gwendolyn, did you have something that you wanted to share about that? Yeah, well, thank you, William. I'll say also um, sort of on the side, missing Armin because I think of him as bringing light into the room and the space and his energy. And so if he ever watches this, Armin, we we miss you and you're, you're here with us in our hearts. So, um, I think that's part of why William and I decided to join. It's like, oh, Armin's going to be here. <laughs> He'll yeah. bring his light and his poems. Yeah. But I also want to honor the um, the indigenous nations where we live, and there the whole idea of light. In so many of our our backgrounds, light is you know we may have come from stars. We're made of stardust. So when I think of light. I think of all the celestial light, all the constellations and the sun and the moon, and then the light that each person carries. In Spanish, to give birth is dar la luz, of, of giving light, giving life. Wow, I love so I that. did bring a, a poem that's not mine that talks about light and prayer. 
um, from a native writer that I thought I might share at some point. Okay, actually, that's a good segue. Why you can go ahead and share that now if you'd like. And it came from the amazing anthology entitled "When the Light of the World Was Subdued." Our songs came through. That was edited by Joy Harjo when she was the poet laureate of our nation. And this is from Al Hunter, a Nishinaabe poet. And it's very short. It's called Prayer Bowl. When the moon is turned upwards, like a bowl waiting to be filled, we must fill it. We must fill it by honoring the spirits of creation with songs of our joy and thanks, with foods created with our own hands, water for the thirsty, prayers for the people, prayers for the spirits, prayers for the creator, prayers for ourselves, and the sacred instruments that join us to the glory of this world, that join us to the glory of this world and to the world beyond our sleep. Aho. Hmm. I love that. That's really beautiful. So William, I was also going to ask if you had brought something. I, I'm going to hopefully like intersperse stuff out. So, um, but if you, I don't know if you guys brought more than one thing or one thing, but I'd love to hear if you brought something to you. Yeah, um, I, I prepared, <laughs> which is you know, somewhat unusual. For me. Um, <laughs> See if I can track it down here. I I I did too, which is also unusual <laughs> for me. <laughs> um. Okay. So I have this pretty long running series of um inventions that um I wrote up, and they were always kind of a a way of. Uh, my wife can tell you that um. I'll just sort of like banter, um, you know, little tiny like stories and scenarios and things. And I tend to do it late at night when it's really annoying. And so, um, you know, to, to quell those aggravations, I just started spitting out like these inventions and they're really short little like random thoughts almost. Um, and I happen to think um, of this one because our mornings are just so dark lately and you know we're at the point now where they're going to get increasingly lighter and lighter and i'm looking forward to that um and so yeah i was going to read one of my inventions inventions i invent a new type of missing it is as light as morning it comes back and back it is on my shoulders like new hours and things to do i wake up to flowers but they bloomed for someone else I like the, uh, you know, you had brought, broadened out the concept to weight and lightness and, uh, you know, we didn't, we, you know, the idea of color, you know, dark and light colors and, and the, or something being heavier light from an emotional standpoint you know, like a poem being heavier light from an emotional standpoint. It just, the word light is just so rich in meaning. Um, and one thing that I always think about is, um, you know, I made the crack earlier about all the artificial light. You know, you walk around the house. I don't know about how you all, but I walk around the house at night and even with all the lights turned off, the house isn't dark because there's all these tiny little lights from all the, you know, the screens and the computers and the television and the, you know, this and that and the other thing. And you go outside and, you know, there's the street lights and there's, you know, like if it's cloudy night, then there's the reflection of all the, all of the uh, lights from the city and I was thinking about how the fact that it's hard for those of us who are urban and suburban dwellers to really 
sort of grasp the concept of what it really means to be dark. And I'm curious, like, I know I'm springing this on you. I haven't just, <laughs> I haven't warned Will or Gwen what I was going to ask tonight. But uh, I'm curious if you have thoughts on what we have lost by not having that contrast with light, by, like not being in a place where it actually gets actually dark, where you can't see anything. And and uh what you know what we gain or lose by not having that and it's funny i i did bring a, a poem about actually soul loss which is a loss of connection with the natural world in many ways mm -hmm. and it's how there's even been clinical studies on our exposure to artificial light around the clock is not healthy for us and how how much we all need to be out in spaces where there isn't any light or and, and not wish for power outages but to have yeah. times yeah. without artificial light yeah i just yeah i i think about that it's like we just don't have that complete sort of decompression that comes with it just being really dark anymore um so yeah it's an interesting question and i in as soon as you um asked it i thought of i have this like really strong fascination with going um you know camping or exploring in places as far away as you can get from um light pollution you know and and i sit here in my light room with my lights on and I think about how amazing it is to be in that utter darkness and the couple times that I feel like I've really achieved my goal of finding those types of places um it's actually in a way really disconcerting um yeah you know and and almost claustrophobic yeah um but as you start to get used to it and you get acclimatized to that darkness uh you sort of begin to understand the amount of um, motion and activity that is just happening everywhere. Um, you know, sounds and like, you know, we think of the, 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 the night sky around here as this sort of like static thing that, you know, moves very slowly like a clock. But if you get up to 10,000 feet out, you know, as far away as you can get from the light pollution, it's like absolute madness um yeah. how yeah. much is going on up there you know and it's just um i don't know it's just utterly fascinating but at the same time for me at least it's kind of terrifying in um in a way that i want to seek out but then also sort of repel from yeah yeah i think it experiencing that um makes you understand a little bit better how you know people that came before us could find so many stories in the stars because you know I go out in my suburban neighborhood and you know I love to go out late at night and in, in the winter and find Orion because it's so easy to see or you know and and um the North Star happens to line up like right in between our house and garage. So I always know where to find it so I can see everything like circling around it. But there's so much space, you know, in between the points of light in the in suburbia because of all the light pollution. But you go out somewhere where there isn't that light pollution and it seems like the sky is just filled. The stars or the sky is just filled with light and you realize, oh, well, you know, I can see how they could fill in those pictures. Whereas here in the, here in suburbia, it's like, how do they get, you know, like a person or a, a, a shape out of just those, you know, connect the dots. But when you go out where there's all the dots, all the, you know, the, the whole space is filled in, it's, it just makes you realize how much we're missing um when we go out at night around here um Gwendolyn did you say you had a poem that you were um 
Yeah, not knowing your question, I had actually picked one from Flight Feathers um, called The Cure for Soul Loss. And go ahead and read it if you'd like. Yeah, please. The Cure for Soul Loss. Red breasted nuthatch remains the cosmos, calls three times. She calls on guardian spirits of this place she calls home. Three times within this intimacy of breath, the wind blew interior feathers while geese circle over Cougar Creek. She cuts maples and cedars, round green prayer sticks. The trees remember their names in the centrifugal ring of story. In order for her to heal, the natural world must be taken inside her body. Listen, nuthatch, a little one. You carry songs to the cedars, whistle at night. The constellations of chickadee and sawweed owl, cosmos, offer star stories, winged messengers to heal the heart of the world. Sorry, I said thank you, Gwendolyn. I'm sorry, I was muted. But um, did you have any um, any? You said you had a, a poem that you had thought of. Um, I will read a poem, and okay. <laughs> I actually, I did actually think of this before you um, asked the question. So I, uh, it's an interesting coincidence, I think. This is from a long series of prose poems that I've been um, working on and, and maybe finally found something to do with them. Um, the whole series is called Nothing Light Still on the Sea. Um, and it sort of arises from the impetus of my sister's death um, a number of years ago, but really abstracted from sort of the physical circumstances of that. So kind of just blending the emotional weight um, into a long series of surreal poems that sort of take place on the sea um, or, or on an estuary and kind of different um, scenarios. But this is one from that and they're really short. At night, the sky forgot where it stops. When I woke, I woke inside it, my legs hanging from my hips like slack ropes. L, the slow yellow beam spinning away beneath them. My first duty as lighthouse keeper was to never let that light go. I think what's always interesting to me when talking about poetry and, and, and words like this is, I always feel like there needs to be a pause after you're done. And <laughs> it's just to kind of take it all in and, and think about it, which is a little odd when you're in the middle of an interview, but, <laughs> but I just feel like there's kind of sitting with the, uh, with the words. I was going to open it up and let, I'm just very curious for the folks that are here, if, um, if there's um, things that you think about related to light or particular ways that you celebrate, regardless of your personal, um, like sort of holiday or not holiday um, that you incorporate in your life that this time of year, are there ways that you consciously incorporate light into your practices, whether they're related to a holiday or not? Um, I would love to have you all share. I don't, you can type it up in the chat or pop up in video, but I would just be very curious to hear how different people sort of incorporate light in, in a way that um, is meaningful um, this time of year. I know for me, one of the things I really love is just kind of completely independently of 
the Christmas tradition. I love people putting lights on their house and I kind of wish that they would leave them up longer because I just love the um, sort of the defiance against night and darkness that you know that all these cheer you know you drive down the street and there's all these cheery lights and some of them are beautifully arranged and so tasteful and some of them are just like completely you know chaotic but I just kind of love them all and um I'm always sad when the people start taking them down I'm just just leave them up until you know until Groundhog Day <laughs> so but go feel free to hop in I know that everybody's muted right now but you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you wanted to share and you you can William you and Gwendolyn can share too and Taylor popped in and said light is my favorite thing and that she's a photographer um so to me the lights are the, one of the best parts of the holidays uh, that's a really interesting hobby too because you really just like um you know like poetry is trying to catch the essence of whatever idea that you're going to try to share i mean photography really is you know you think you're taking a photograph of a tree or a flower but really you're taking a picture of how the light is interacting with whatever that thing is so yeah that's definitely a way to interact it um benjamin shares that i always try to catch the light during my work day by going out for a lunchtime walk especially this time of year if i wait too long it gets dark and nighttime walks are cool but not the same yeah i have same here i've been been uh trying to get out before it gets dark too but i noticed gwendolyn you have lights behind you i love the color <laughs> is that something you leave up long term or that you just put up for a little bit no they 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 may move around and but they will stay up yeah all, yeah all year and my kids both have colored lights in their rooms that don't come down. <laughs> they they just stay at most of the year. Of course, you don't have them on as long in the evening in the summer, but just nice. Did either of you bring any other poems to share? Yeah, I can share some stuff that I brought. Um, I was, I was trying to find poems where I was thinking about light and using light, um, and not just saying the words light in my yeah. poems. Um, you know, I, I th think I probably achieved both, um, but we'll see. Uh, and I'm going to read a a new, new, new poem. So, um, you know, it's, this is as uncomfortable to me as it as it is to anyone else here. Um, <laughs> this one is uh, tentatively, I don't like to name my poems right out of the gate because I don't know them yet, um, but I named this one for indexical purposes. <laughs> uh, it's called, What Isn't the Size of a Universe? I sit in a stone house surrounding the earth it is full of holes, the light comes through. These are days still nobody enters into. They dawn without being seen. They pass as in a moment of discontainment. Above the doorway, a lamp from, the which, from which the wax drips form a field a sway with poppies. Hmm. I actually love that title. I don't know if it'll stick, but I really like it. <laughs> Who knows? Did you have any others that you wanted to share, Gwendolyn? Well, I had a, a couple chosen out. Jude asked us to have a, a few. Um, and I think of of the lightness of birds. You know, my collection was 
flight feathers, but this is from Snowy Elves and Unexpected Graces, and it's actually the the title poem of how light they are, but also the beauty and the light they bring to us. Mm -hmm. So Snowy Elves and Unexpected Graces. How they come unexpected, almost as if visitors from another realm, transcendent, magical, white plumes of snow, flight feathers. When we are in balance, our chi flows through our bodies with no blockage. The body is well. When there is a blockage of that energy, problems develop. Our bodies mirror the earth. This winter, the owls fly south in migrations, eruptions. The owls are catalysts of remembering that we are all, that we all know who we are, of how to be a spirit, to be seen for who we are, round yellow eyes, gilded wisdom of the movements of common bulls, field mice, wind weather patterns. The owls wing their way through time, appearing in Paleolithic cave art in France this morning near the airport. Grace is the flight of the owl, silent as the synapses of neurons, regeneration of tissue, synergistic healing, skimming over the frozen earth, ice crystals, wisdom, silence, illuminated. Thank you. That was very, very cool. Oh, sorry. Anybody else have anything that they wanted to share about what we've been talking about tonight? I've got about four minutes and 45 seconds left. <laughs> so I'd love to hear anybody else who does anything with light or <laughs> uses it in some way during this time of year to kind of get through the dark days. Does anybody have any like, uh, um, so I know Hanukkah is going on. I don't, I don't know if anybody here tonight is, is celebrating that, but um, <clears throat> does anybody use candles in any way in the winter, whether just to enjoy or as part of a mm -hmm. celebration? We have candles kind mm. of everywhere, but I feel as though I'm required to admit that they are not actually real candles. And they're <laughs> yeah, like yeah. those LED candles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but they're great and they're and you know they're on all the time. And it makes me wish that we use real candles like a yeah. lot more often than we and we do. Um but that sort of softness of the light that they give off is uh, just so, you know, nice and comfortable, um, you know, kind of different um, from the harshness of like a light bulb. And, you know, with yeah. real candles, it's sort of like the movement of the light that mm -hmm. bounces around and grabs things differently and more interestingly. Um, yeah. Now I just want to go light a bunch of candles. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, and I think that I love candles too, but you also have to be careful with them. So I totally understand the uh, not the not candle candles because it's probably safer. But yeah, we have a a couple of lights that we just bought that um, kind of look like an old fashioned lantern, but they have a dimmer, a dim. And they're LEDs, but they have a dimmer, and I love that because I can turn them way down and. This looks very cool. Christine commented that she's there that they celebrate the solstice this time of year. And uh Benjamin's just said, you know, light being comforting. So yeah, I just I just think it's neat how we stop and think about, oh hey, yeah, this light, light is interesting and and we use it in all kinds of ways to to find comfort or or uh <clears throat> peace you know turning lights down or making them bright depending on what we need and oh that's very cool well thank you i was gonna add oh, go ahead. i have a 
a phrase in my last book, Flight Feathers, that gratitude enkindles light and a grateful mm -hmm. heart illuminates the space around it. So I wanted to give gratitude to you and to all the staff at Vintage Books oh, for thank you. holding that yeah. independent press in in our county, in Clark County. Yeah. So thank you so much. Agreed. You are thank so you. welcome. I'm so glad that you both could be here. I'm sad that Armin couldn't, but we'll do something else with him a little bit later. And for everybody who was here, um, <clears throat> definitely check out all the wonderful poets that we have in Clark County. Like, yes, we have some in the store that, you know, physical books, but I, there's also events. Um, I just got to go to Birdhouse Books for the first time. I finally got my body down there <laughs> to re meet them. And they are great about supporting the local poetry community, too. So definitely seek it out and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the year and a wonderful solstice and thank you so much for being here tonight have a good night thank you for thank sponsoring you. it you're welcome it was wonderful good to see you Gwendolyn <laughs> good night good night <laughs>